Good afternoon again from Yami B TV. Right, um, in the mood to babble this afternoon, pleased to report that I'm coming back to full health now, and long may it continue. The heart gets softer and more humble as time goes on with this journey of the ups and downs of life struggles on the outside world. Um, but I'm, I'm claiming victory very soon. <laughs> but you've heard that one before. But um, I'm looking back, right? I put up that photo the other day with a bare chest out and I'm looking back and looking at me now and I'm thinking how I was and I find it very difficult to believe uh, that the best way to describe me uh, back then would have been a raving lunatic I'm afraid and I can't believe that I was like that. I've got so much regret about being and behaving in the way that I did all those years ago man. it's almost embarrassing when I think of some of the muggy things that I did all for the sake of doing things by way of a self-harm nature to just get one track mind of getting one thing and one thing only that mattered and the be all and end all to everything. It was almost like a kamikaze suicide pilot that as long as you fight anyone for that, Yami, but for any other reason, you wouldn't, you don't want to know. <laughs> you everyone, that's why they all used to scream. No one likes me taking anything because I wasn't the same. I'm, Enough of us, we all change when we, there's substance misuse involved. But um, looking at that picture the other day, like some of you suggested, said it tells its own story because you remember how exactly how you was and what was going on at that time. Now, in 2000, like I said, that was in Coliseum, right? I did a video on it um, before, but obviously I was out five months then, and that was the longest period outside in history. Five months of absolute carnage and mayhem, right? Um, up until now, the three years I've been out now without one single crime. But that was the longest back then in 2000. I was over Surrey, but I was frequenting all the garage clubs for the first time in life. I was outside and actually going to raves of some sort. Now, that night in Coliseum, now, Charlie B was there, rest in peace as well, at LMC. And I remember him telling the doorman, when I was trying to get back into the club, someone was, they had someone locked in a room in the back. And I was saying, listen, come out my way. All of them were crowding me out, but I offered all of them out, right? I was saying, listen, let me go in, because I wanted to go and get him out of the room. Now, I could hear Charlie B's warning them all, saying to him, listen, be, lot, be careful, don't watch the ponytail. That's what he was saying. But I could hear him saying it, and they, they were going to mind him, mind him. So he was basically telling them to let me go and get him and just leave it be, right? Which they did in the end, amazingly, right? So Charlie B was in high down with me in the 90s and he witnessed something. That's why he said that, because he was on the same wing as me, right? Big love to his brother Chuku as well from Junction, I think he's from. But Charlie B was my boy, man. Uh, sad, sad tale that with Charlie, um, but a very, very talented man as well, right? Charlie saw saw me and two he saw something anyway and I down. I'll tell you about that story another time. Uh but he witnessed me come it looked like I was coming, I was stuck and then I came back. I got I got back into it all and, and done the pair of them. But I when I look back, I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, he was a raving lunatic. He didn't care about anything. I struggled to believe how how I am now and how I think about how I was then. Like I said already, but I'm realising there's, there's not many people, I, I wasn't scared of no one during those times. I believed that I could, even though it was shorter and maybe smaller, but I was an absolute beast. We, we, let's not forget that. I, I actually believed that I could do a lot of them <laughs> when there was something involved. But during that time, now, so you got that, uh, the Coliseum thing. So during that time, that five months out, that's when I saw um, Lee Murray for the second time in life, or for her time. Because remember, I saw him as a kid. And I predicted that he was going to be somebody. How about that? And during this time in 2000 is when I first came across Kim Farrier, who was going to be a great, great fighter as well on all fronts, right? So they were very, very striking similarities between Lee Murray and Kim Farrier. They got along well as well. I don't know. That would have been a serious matchup. Um, but I know Kim was mustered on the floor. And I know Lee was good with his fist as well. They were both all round. But 
Kim Kim was a different was a different kettle of fish as well, right? And I predicted that he was going to be somebody as well. Asked them if you don't believe me. I said to him, you know, you're going to be something. Because when I met them, they, he was a kid. They were kids, and I, they were saying, Uncle Yemi, how come your physique's like that, and you don't eat, and all you smoke, and because I was hanging around with them a little bit, and Jimmy Manola as well. I did like Jimmy as well. He was smaller than as well, and then he became a uh, a big name fighter down. So I hear down that neck of the woods. Uh, but me, he took a shot. He used to kind of uh, take to me as well, Jimmy. And during that time, I told you Aston Melody, top notch and all that. I used to go in them garage raves and I had the ponytail with the Mac and all that. I think I told you that before. But the Lee Murray thing in Charing Cross Road, right? Some of you are asking me. Um, he would have been in his 20s then. So he was a little bit older than Kim. I always thought they were around about the same age. But there's got to be a three or four year difference, I think, between them. Um, that night, you remember the old heaven on Charing Cross Road, right? Or the other one. There's a couple clubs from back in the day on a Thursday night on that road. And I got there to go and pick somebody up late. I didn't go into the rave itself. But I saw Lee Murray get snipered from the side as he was outside the club. He got into a tangle with somebody else. Like he was trying to look out for somebody else and didn't see the punch coming. Um, so he got slightly a slide back, but it didn't even budge him, right? And another geezer rushed him from the front with a weapon. So I saw Lee bang, put this geezer away, and then I saw him disarm. It was a glass bottle. Lee disarmed him there and then took him out as well. And then I saw the car. He was backing off, and it was, it was like, where was everyone? No one else was getting involved apart from Lee, and he was backing towards the car. Uh, and I was on the other side of the road and I was saying, Lee, mind out, mind out. And he was backing off towards his car and then the car pulled up and he, he, he went like that. He, he spun me and dived in the back of the car and drove off. So I saw that with my own eyes, right? Fact, 100%, right? So, that, and again, remember in the early, early day, I saw, when I saw, 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 saw him once, I said, I said, you're going to be somebody, you know, in, in, in thing. Remember, I haven't spent a lot of time out. So it came true. They, they both became household names and both, both, both very intelligent men as well. Uh, if you get what I mean, you can always see it that, that the kind of, all right, we're all losers in the end because we always end up getting caught and we want to do prison time. Um, so no one's, you know, you can't say you, certain mastermind, but you can say that some were more skilled at it than others, if you get what I mean. But that was that was that time in 2000. And then of course, it ended with the siege where the armed police came, came for me. But I'm not basically telling you that I was really <laughs> at the way I was all for nothing. I'm thinking it was more just a suicide thing day after day after day and just taking the consequences and taking harsh, harsh sentences by way of like do every day. They all used to hold on to me as well, but we know about all that as well. But much love to you all today. Just thought I'd tell you that. Kind of like I promised you, I'll come up with that part too. And there's another story as well with Lee Murray, but I'll get round to that another time, all right?